Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plan and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Our children can go to children's church tonight. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. A time to build up. And yes, there is a time to weep. I come here tonight. The title of my message is A Time for Tears. A Time for Tears. God, we thank you so much for your presence that is in this place tonight. You see every soul. You see every circumstance and every situation, every trial and every tribulation. And God, yes, you see every tear. Every tear that's been cried in a midnight hour. Every tear that's been shed in a closet when they're alone. Every tear, Lord, that's rolled down every cheek while they've prayed and sought your face. God, you are the one that ordained tears. I'm asking you in this place tonight that in the remainder of the service as your word goes forth, that every heart, every mind, and every spirit would remain in tune with your presence, God. And I pray that you would minister in this place, God, as only you can do. Have your way, and we're going to give you praise for it. And everybody say in Jesus' name. You can be seated, but don't sit down on me in your spirit. The Lord is not finished in this service tonight. I have a feeling that there's some things that He still wants to do. Tears. Tears are something that this generation tries their very best to abstain from. As a matter of fact, as a young man growing up, I was taught that men don't cry that tears were a sign of weakness and uh, you were supposed to do everything that you could do to stop tears from flowing but I'm afraid that's not true real men do cry and tears are okay and there is a time in our life for tears you see Tears is a way that God gives to us to release our emotions when we're overwhelmed. When it seems like the pressures and the trials of life are so great and they're pressing against you in such a way that you can't take it anymore. When you're in those moments where you're in your prayer closet and you don't even know what to say. And you don't even know how to pray. That's a real good moment and time for tears. The psalmist David said it like this in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed. There are moments when you are living for God that circumstances and situations catch you off guard. Whether it's a loss of a loved one, whether it's stress of the day and things that you're going through, there are moments that even as children of God, you're going to feel that word overwhelmed. Webster's Dictionary defines overwhelmed as upset, overthrown, to cover over completely, to submerge, to overcome, 
to overpower in thought or feeling. There are moments, I, I wish I could tell you tonight that when you begin to live for God that life is going to be great and everything's going to work out your way in every moment of life and there's never going to be a moment when you're going to feel that word overwhelmed but that's not true because there are times in our life when we're facing situations and circumstances and trials and tribulations and we look up at the Lord and we say God I feel just like David felt I feel overwhelmed I feel like I don't know where to go and where to turn I feel like I don't know how I'm going going to make it through this trial that I'm in and how I'm going to come out of the situation that I'm dealing with I'm overwhelmed God I feel like I'm in the water and I'm sinking and I'm drowning and I'm doing everything to catch my next breath but I'm struggling and it's in that moment that it's a good time for tears it's in that moment that you need to do like the psalmist David when he said I cried unto the Lord just something about tears nobody likes to have to shed tears but there is a time for tears David said from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee and when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I am there's going to be some moments in your life when you don't know how you're going to make it Pass wind just like somebody that's drowning in the water and they're reaching for their last hope. Uh, out of that water there comes a hand that's reaching up for help, crying out, uh, somebody reach for me. Uh, somebody save me. Uh, can I tell you, you've got a God tonight uh, whose ear is not deaf to your cry and his arm is not short that it cannot save you. Uh, but he's looking for somebody uh, that in their moment of distress, uh, they will shed some tears and cry unto him because when those tears begin to roll down your face he knows exactly what your heart's feeling when those tears are rolling down your cheeks he knows the emotion that's going through your heart your mind and your spirit and when you don't have the words to form in your situation those tears will speak every word that need to be spoken and God will understand exactly what you're saying He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. And I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covering of thy wings, Selah. Psalm was 55. He said, give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplications. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy and because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I've seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow her in the midst of this. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceitful and guile depart not from her streaks. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then could I have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me. That did magnify himself against me. Then would I have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man mine equal. My God and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go quick into hell for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon the Lord and the Lord will sh shall save me. 
evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them even he that abideth of old Selah because they have no changes therefore they fear not God. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalms 142, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Listen to what the Lord said. Then thou knewest my path. In that moment when you feel like you're all alone and God don't know where you are. He knows exactly where you are. In the way wherein I've walked, they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me and no man cared for my soul. But I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thee, and the righteous shall come past me about, for thou hast dealt bountifully with me. In the book of Second Kings, chapter number 20, verse number Five, we have the story of King Hezekiah. The man of God comes to him and tells him, Get your house in order, for you're facing to die, Hezekiah. But Hezekiah began to seek the face of the Lord. And the Lord granted him more time. And listen to what verse 5 says. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. And behold, I will heal thee. And on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. The psalmist David said, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalms 126 and 5 says this, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. There is a time in life for tears. Even the Lord himself shed tears. And tears are okay. As a matter of fact, the only time in life that there really won't be any more tears is when you stand before the Lord and he wipes them all away. Until then, there's going to be tears. But tears are not a bad thing. There's just something about finding your way into the presence of the Lord in those moments when you're overwhelmed by life. You're overwhelmed in your emotions. You're overwhelmed in your situation, your circumstance. And you just sit there and don't have to say anything. But you're broken before the Lord. And you just allow those tears to just stream down your face. It's almost like you just feel clean on the inside when you get up. I love the shout. I love the dance. I love the run, the aisles. But there's just something about those services when God 
calls you into His presence and you're broken before Him and you're open before Him and you begin to shed those tears and they can freely flow down your face and it's just a clean feeling and it's a deep experience. And that's what the Lord is doing in this house tonight is He's calling us into His presence. He's calling us into a safe place where you can lay your burdens down at His feet. He's calling you into a place tonight where it's okay to shed tears. It's okay to be broken because He said a broken and contrite spirit He will in no wise cast out. There is a time for tears and I got a feeling that in this house tonight there are some people that just feel so much pressure on the inside. Pressure from life. Pressure in your emotions. Pressure on your job. Pressure from the spiritual attack of the enemy pressure in your family pressure in your home pressure from your children and on the inside of you you feel like you're just about to explode if that's you tonight then it's a real good time for tears because there's just something about tears that relieves that pressure I know it's been a very different service tonight. But you know what? God is sovereign and He can do whatever He wants and He knows what we need. He knows where we are. And one more time as <clears throat> she begins to play. open in the altars there's a variety of reasons why in life you shed tears you know God never promised us we wouldn't have trials and tribulations he didn't ever promise us that a cross that we carry was going to be light he didn't ever promise that there would not be any trouble or heartache or pain. But there are some promises. He promised that He'd never leave us or forsake us. That He'd be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So as we all stand together tonight, I'm open to the altar. And every soul in this house that just wants to come and let God one more time Wrap His loving arms around you and hold you. Many times I question certain circumstances Frustration gets so out of hand. Then I'm reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand one test alone. While look at all the victories, the Spirit rises up in me. My weakness is made strong. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory.
victory without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold 